When God said, I'm going to make you in my image, he broke the mold. He didn't replicate or duplicate anything. Everything about you is unique. You are fearfully, wonderfully made and made in God's image. And all the power that has been divested in Jesus Christ, you now have access to. Glory to God. Sound like somebody's come here ready to have church this morning. Glory to God, glory to God. My name is Pastor Lee Ferguson, and uh, Bishop is out in, uh, I believe he's in Ireland, Greece, Greece, wherever he is. <laughs> I, I, I get tired just watching the bishop. I don't know how he does it. It's an, anoint, it's an anointing on him for sure. But he's out in the mission field preaching the gospel for Jesus, and I'm, he's entrusted me this morning to bring the word. Amen. Glory to God. Let's just have a word of prayer before we begin. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Jesus, for this is the day you have made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it, Lord God. We thank you for the honor and the privilege, of oh God, to be able to come and worship you and bow down before you and lift up your holy, majestic name. We give you praise for this service. We give you praise for what you're about to do right now. And I ask, oh God, that you use me for your glory. Speak through me, Jesus, that whoever is here, God, shall be set free, delivered, not through my words, Lord, but through your power and your anointing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. amen. Glory to God. Turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. And the title of my sermon this morning is The Greatest of All Time. The greatest of all time. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 17. And it reads, That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at the right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also that is which to come. And I put all things under his feet and gave to him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that fulfilleth all in all. Amen. Amen. So what defines a person to be classified as the greatest of all times, a.k.a. the GOAT. <laughs> the, ne the definition of being the GOAT is, has been inspired by people in our society that we regard as the greatest human being to ever master a particular category in a specified area of expertise. To reach a level of success or status in life that no other person has ever achieved receiving worldwide recognition and accolade, not only from a monetary standpoint, but their spectacular contribution and influence in modern times. So with that being said, let's look at some people that we regard as the greatest of all time. There's Albert Einstein, born in Germany on March 14th, 1879, and is widely held to be the greatest and most influential scientist of all time. He is best known for his equation E equals mc squared, which states that energy and matter are the same thing, just in different forms. And he is responsible for discovering the photoelectric effect. Then we have Winston Churchill, born in the UK on November 30th, 1874, regarded to be the greatest prime minister to have ever lived and led the British to victory in the Second World War. For him, I'm grateful, because I'll be speaking German right now. <laughs> One of his famous speeches said, we shall go 
unto the end. We shall fight in France. We shall fight on the seas and oceans. We shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air. We shall defend our land whatever the cost may be. People don't speak like this no more. <laughs> Sidney Poitier, born in Miami, Florida, on February 20th, 1927. An American actor, film director, and diplomat. He was the first black actor to ever win Academy Award. He also, was not, he also won a, Globe and Globe, a Globe, Golden Globe, excuse me, a BAFTA, and a Grammy Award. He was also nominated to receive two Emmy Awards and Tony Awards. Then we have Leonardo da Vinci, born in the Republic of Florence on April 15, 1452. He was a painter and a drawer and regarded as the greatest creator ever. He painted the famous Last Supper and the Mona Lisa and is revered by millions of people even to this day. One of his paintings sold for $450 million. Then there's Mother Teresa, born in Ottoman Empire on August 26, 1910. Founded missionaries of charities which grew 4,500 nuns across 130, 133 countries in 2020, 2012 and cared for people for die, who were dying of H HIV, leprosy, and tuberculosis. Her charity vowed to give wholeheartedly free service to the poorest of the poor. She received an honor of the Ramon Peace Prize and the Nobel Peace Prize. Then is Michael Jordan, born in Brooklyn, New York, on February 17, 1963. Or you LeBron haters, just be quiet. <laughs> My, Michael Jordan is the goal. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you say. <laughs> anyway. His profile on the NBA website lists him as the greatest bas basketball player to ever live. Receiving six NBA championships, six NBA finals, MVP, five most valuable players, and 14 all-star awards. His net worth is $3.2 billion. Then there's Tom Brady, born in California on August 3rd, 1977. An American football quarterback for 23 seasons, 20 of which were with the New England Patriots. Winning seven Super Bowl championships, five Super Bowl MVPs, three NFL MVP awards, just to name a few. He has been regarded as the greatest quarterback of all time. Then there's Whitney Houston, born in New Jersey, August 9th, 1963. Selling over 220 million records worldwide, receiving six Grammy Awards and 22 American Awards. She became one of the greatest females of all time. As great as these people are, I want to introduce you. What did I say? As great as these people are, I want to introduce you to a man that tops every greatest list. A man, unlike Albert Einstein, his intellect cannot be measured by any elite professor. A man, unlike Winston Churchill, he has never lost a battle. A man, unlike Sidney Poitier, he doesn't need lights, camera, and action. A man, unlike Leonardo da Vinci, he doesn't need a paint and a brush. He used his voice and created the most perfect masterpiece in creation. A person unlike Mother Teresa, he doesn't need to create a humanitarian program to care for the sick and the hungry. Instead, he says, I am the bread of life and I am the healer of the sick. <laughs> a man unlike Michael Jordan and Tom Brady, he has never lost a game. And his ability to call a play will lead you to victory 100% of the time. <laughs> A person unlike Whitney Houston, this, when this man walks on the stage, the heavenly host of heaven says, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. This man is life. Before there was life, he is life. This man is without beginning and without end. This man is so wealthy, when he walks in heaven, his feet are walking on paves of gold. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce to you the Rose of Sharon, the Lily of the Valley, the water in the dry land, the bread of life, 
the line of the tribe of Judah, the one seated at the right hand of the Father, <laughs> the one who sits on his throne. The world is his footstool. Every person that's ever lived and every person that's about to live has to cry, holy, 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 Lord God almighty. Who am I talking about? I am talking about the first, the last. His name is Jesus. <laughs> His name is Jesus. Be seated. You're trying to preach my message, huh? Glory to God. So with that being said, let's go back to our original text. And I'm going to use the NIV version, New International Version, just to bring some foundation, some, a different approach to this scripture. It reads, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that your eyes, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may have know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably power, great power for us who believe. The power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Jesus Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly realms. Far above all rule, authority, power, dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Okay. Paul said some magnificent things in this scripture. Paul stated that he prays that we obtain the spirit of wisdom and revelation so we may know him, Jesus, better. So my question is, what is the spirit of wisdom and revelation? If I study Michelle long enough, I will learn her personality. I will know what she likes and dislikes. I will know what excites her. I know what angers her. If I study the mechanics of my car, over a period of time, I will understand how that car operates. The spirit of wisdom and revelation refers to the gifts of the Holy Spirit to help us understand Jesus. These insights cannot be naturally attained. What do these special gifts do? They confirm the truth of Scripture. It brings understanding and knowledge of Scripture. These gifts also reveal sin. These gifts drive us to be closer to Jesus. It helps us understand the power that was divested in Jesus. Paul then goes to say that your, the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order to know the hope to which you are called. Without these gifts of wisdom and revelation, you are walking around literally blindfolded. You cannot see the difference between the woods and the trees. You have a, a veil over your eyes. Without these spiritual gifts, you cannot see ahead of you. So it's no, it's no wonder then when we see so many people living wicked, sinful lives. All that tells me is that their eyes have not been enlightened to the truth of Jesus. He continues to say the riches of his glory, in, his glorious inheritance in his holy people and great power for us who believe. Have you ever seen a king's kingdom? I have. Coming from a country where they have kings and queens. I have been to Buckingham Palace. I've been to Blenheim Palace. And these are magnificent sights. Every conceivable jewel that you can think of are in these places. You have gold, you have rubies, you have precious artifacts. The king has enormous wealth and resources. The scripture says that to those who believe you have incomparably great power. What is this great power that I'm referring to? When God said, let us make man in our image, 
the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the triune being, what he was saying was, I'm creating man in our image. God spoke life into existence. He created everything that we see and live in today. He used his creative mind and words to create everything that we live in today. The deep oceans, the galaxies, the solar systems, God created that with his creative power. That same power, people of God, is, has been divested into you and me. Think about that. That same power is inside of you right now. That same power that caused the sun to be placed in the sky. The deep oceans filled with every kind of creature you can think of. That same power is inside of you and me. So let me ask you a question though. If that is the truth, which it is because the word of God is forever settled in heaven, Amen. God cannot lie. Amen. There's no mistake in God. There's no fallacy in God. God never makes a mistake. So let me ask you this question. Why is there such a massive disconnect between what God has said and created compared to the life you're living right now? Let's answer that question. Let's go to the book of Judges. Why is there such a massive disconnect between the almighty God and the power that he's divested in us and the life you're currently living? Judges chapter 6, reading from verse 1, glory to God. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel, and because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the children excuse me, made them the dens which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. And so it was when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them. And they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth till that thou came unto Gaza and left no substance for Israel neither sheep nor ox or ass. Let's go to verse 7. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord because of the Midianites, the Lord sent a prophet unto the, the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage, and I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you and drave them out from before you and gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the God of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell, but ye have not obeyed my voice. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under the oak which was in opera that pertained unto Joash, the Abazarites. And his son gave him fresh wheat in the winepress and hid it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and saith unto him, The Lord is with thee, thy great man of valor. Let me stop there for a second. So, I ask the question, why is there such a big disconnect between what God has said, his creative power, and the life you are living right now? The children of Israel are a perfect example as to why things are not working out in many people's lives today. You would have thought that they, having come out from the land of Egypt in the book of Exodus, all of the things that they saw, that great Exodus, how God used Moses, you would have thought that that would have stayed with them for the rest of eternity. But how quickly we forget what God has done for us. Not only forget, but turn away from God and start living a life of sin. How is that possible? But this is exactly what happened to the children of Israel. So now they find themselves captive to the Midianites for seven years because of sin. But look how merciful God is. God has, you would have thought God would have been, if, if I was God, let me just be honest. <laughs> if I was God and I delivered you from your bondage and your captivity, 
and then you turn around and do the same thing, I'll be done with you. So thank God I'm not, I'm not the Savior. But look how wonderful and merciful God is. Even though Israel had now recommitted a sin, they cry out to God for mercy to help them escape the, the oppression of the Midianites. And God answers their prayer and goes to a man called Gideon. What does he say to Gideon? Thy mighty man of valor. But at this time, you'll notice there was nothing mighty about Gideon. The Bible says that Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press. Threshing wheat in a wine press in the middle of oppression. That makes no sense. This tells me that Gideon was fearful, he was a coward, and he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. But God called him not by his name, but by what he's about to become. Let me say that again. God called him not by his birth name, but by what he is about to become. Judges chapter 6, verse 36. And Gideon said unto God, If thou wilt save Israel by mine hand, and as thou hast said, behold, I will place a fleece of wool in the floor. And if the dew be on the fleece only, and it be dry upon the earth beside, then I shall know that thou wilt save Israel by mine hand, as thou hast said. And it was so, for he rose up early in the morning and thrust the fleece together and wringed out the dew of the fleece of bowl full of water. And Gideon said unto God, let not thine anger be hot against me. And I will speak but this once. Let me prove, I pray thee, for this once with the fleece. Let it now be dry only upon the fleece. And upon all the ground, let there be dew. And God did so that night, and it was dry upon the fleece only, and there was dew on all the ground. Every time I read this passage of scripture, I always chuckle to myself, because I can, I, can I can see God and I can see myself. God has spoken to you. He has given you specific instructions. And because of the doubt that we have that comes in our mind instantly, we, we want confirmation. So what does Gideon say to God? Okay, God, if you really want me to be used by you to deliver your people from the hands of Midian, I need you to confirm your word. I want to make sure that I'm not making things up. So I have this fleece. I'm going to put it out in the morning, and I need this fleece to be full of water. And around the fleece, I need it to be dry. Gideon wakes up the following day. God has done it. The fleece is so full of water, the Bible says that he starts to wring out the water and it fills a bowl of water. So, so Gideon's now, okay, God, I see you've done that, but can you just confirm the confirmation? Can you just confirm the confirmation? Just don't be mad at me. I mean, I mean don't be angry at me, Lord. I know you're God, but can you just, so I'm not tripping. Can you just reconfirm what I think I heard you say and what I think I saw happen last night? I don't, can you just do it one more time for me? God is like, sure. So what does he do now? The fleece is dry, but the water around the fleece is wet. So here again is God's mercy. He knows that we are weak. We are failed beings. He knows that we need every step of the way. He, we know that we need, Lord, I need you to help me for this next step I'm about to, about to take. Forgive me, Lord, for I'm weak in my mind. I'm weak in my flesh. And God, in his mercy, he will give you what you need. <laughs> Judges chapter 7, verse 2. Excuse me, Judges chapter, look at it. Judges chapter 7, verse 2. And the Lord said unto Gideon, the people that are with thee are too many <laughs> for me to give the Midianites into thine hands, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, mine own hand have saved me. <laughs> now therefore go 
to proclaim in their ears of the people saying, whosoever is fearful and afraid, let them return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And their return of the people, 22,000. And there remained 10,000. And the Lord said unto Gideon, the people are yet too many. Bring them down to the water, and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I will say unto thee, this shall go with thee, and the same shall go with thee. Of whomsoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. Hmm? And he brought them down, the people, onto the water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, every man that lappeth the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth, him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that boweth down upon his knees to drink, and the number that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, was 300 men. But the rest of the people bowed down and on their knees to drink the water. Now look at this. Gideon heard, heard the word of the Lord, and he built himself an army of 32,000 soldiers. Somebody say 32,000. 32, Think of that. 32,000. God said, I don't want Israel to take credit for what I'm about to do. I don't want no flesh to take credit for what I'm about to do. Tell these men, whoever is fearful, you can go. If you're afraid and you're fearful, you are disqualified for what I'm about to do. The Bible says 22,000 soldiers went back home for fear. Left out to, now down to 10,000 soldiers. God said, there's still too many. That's too much flesh for me to move. That's too much flesh for me to do the miraculous. All of those that go to the riverside and put their head in the water and take care of their fleshly desires, their lustful desires, their sensual desires are now disqualified for what I'm about to do. The Bible says that now Gideon is left with 300 men. For sake of time, I won't continue the scripture, but the, 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 the ending of this story is that the 300 men went with Gideon and they walked towards the Midian army. The Bible says there were so many Midianites that it looked like grasshoppers on the land. It, 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 you cannot count the amount of men in a Midian army compared to 300 men. So as they are walking towards the Midian army, here comes the Lord with his power. <laughs> they are walking, saying the sword of our God is with us. As they are walking, the Midian army hear this sound. As they are walking towards the Midian army, the Midian army hear this sound, and they are so fearful that they start to kill each other. They are so fearful that they start to destroy each other. So what am I saying to you, saints of God? This is not the time to be fearful. This is not the time to be fearful. God is about to do the miraculous in your life, but do not disqualify yourself. Do not allow your fleshly desires to disqualify yourself for what God is about to do. Mm -hmm. There is a God strategy for your deliverance. I say that again. There is a God strategy for your deliverance. There is a kingdom strategy for your deliverance. There is a God-given word for your deliverance. Whatever the devil has come against you with, whatever the force of hell has come against you with, there is a God strategy. There is a kingdom strategy for your exit. Mm -hmm. What is this strategy that I'm referring to? Let's go to Ephesians chapter 3. Verse 17, glory to God. And it reads that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, 
that she may be fulfilled with all fullness of God. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you may be able to ask or think according, disclaimer, to the power that works in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. I said to you, there is a God strategy. <laughs> I submit to you, church, no power, no abundantly. No revelation of who God is, you cannot expect the abundantly in your life. No relationship with God, you cannot expect the supernatural abundance of God to... If there is something not right in your life, I submit to you, it is not the word of God. If there's something not right in your life, I submit to you, you are out of alignment. Let me talk about me and my wife for a second. Is that okay? I'm going to do it anyway. So, <laughs> we were having a conversation a few weeks ago, talking about our finances and what is the number that we would need to be completely debt free? And me and my wife, we, you know, it's amazing how God works with us. We just be having these random conversations. I'm like, there it is. That's the Lord right there. It happens all the time with us. Just talking. Oh, there's God right there. God gave us a strategy. God gave us a kingdom strategy. <laughs> God gave us a word. And we applied that God kingdom strategy to be financially free. There is a God strategy. There is a kingdom strategy. There is a word of God that you have to activate in your life for it to manifest. So me and my wife work this God strategy. What is the number? It's a crazy number. Okay, well, I just happen to believe that God can do anything. Yeah. Call me crazy. I just happen to believe that God can do exceedingly yeah. because it's in his word. Yeah. Exceedingly, abundantly, more than I can ask or think. Yeah. Is that not the word of God? Yeah. Is that not the word of God? Yeah. So here we are now. This is our number. Supernaturally, we receive that transfer in our bank account. Wait a second. Mortgage gone. Car repayments gone. Credit cards gone. Luke's tuition paid in full. All debts gone. Cancellation gone. Do you know what? It's amazing how the air smells differently when you don't owe anybody. You mean to tell me that I can walk in such abundance that man can't control my finances. Let me tell you about finances. If you are called to do anything for God, which I am, you cannot do what God has called you when you're shackled by money. I'll say that again. You may think you have a call of God in your life, and you do. But if you owe money, and you've got to go to work to pay those bills, you cannot fulfill the call of God in your life. Me and my wife, we are called to do great things for God. And I tell you now, I know what I'm called to do and I need to be financially free to be a resource to people. You are looking, you are looking at the mold I'm millionaire. Not because I'm trying to be rich for myself. No, I'm a godly resource. And God is about to trust me with the abundance more than I can ask or think. I am just crazy enough to believe what God has said. So what is it? Are you dealing with sickness in your body? I've just told you that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly more. It's financial issue. I just gave you my testimony that I'm walking now in freedom. Do we believe the word of God or not? Is the word true? God can do exceedingly, abundantly, more than, I'm a very creative thinker and I can think of a lot of things. But God has said, I can do more than that, Lee. 
I can do better than that, Lee. I can give you more than that, Lee. Mm -hmm. If God says it, I'm just crazy enough to say that it, I believe it and I'm walking in it out. If God has said it, I believe it and that settles the conversation. So you have to know who you are. You have to know who you are. Psalms 139. Verse 14, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Let me just show you something. I just told you that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, amen? Okay, so this is my blue pearl. To the ordinary eye, this just looks like a bass guitar, right? I have many bass guitars at home. But this one is unique. Why? Because it has been custom made for Lee. I have many guitars at home, but this one has a particular monetary value that my other basses don't have. I had to wait a year for this thing to be made for Lee Ferguson. I know everything about this instrument. Why? Because I designed it. I know the electronics, I chose the color, I like gold, because I'm rich. <laughs> the neck has been made for the size of my hand. This has been custom made for Lee Ferguson, to the extent now where my name is on the head. Ooh, Jesus. I have many... I have many instruments, but this one has a particular value. Why? Because it is custom made. What am I saying to you? Pastor, you don't know what I've done. You don't know where I've been. I submit to you, you are custom made. Yeah. Pastor Lee, I've been sexually abused. I hear you. You have been custom made. Yeah. Pastor Lee, I'm strung out on alcohol and substance abuse. I submit to you. You are custom made. I'm going through a divorce right now. How can, I, how can I be custom made? God has said you are custom made. Mm -hmm. I can't stop watching pornography. I say to you, you are custom made. I keep having suicidal thoughts. I submit to you, you are custom made. Nobody loves me, Pastor Lee. I submit to you, you are custom made. Mm -hmm. The very thing that you think disqualifies you, the very thing that the enemy is talking to you about, saying you are a failure, you will never win, you are defeated, that same thing God is going to use and make your life into a beautiful masterpiece. You are custom made. And when something is custom made, it takes time. I had to wait. I remember when this was being made, I was checking my emails every day. Every day waiting for this thing to arrive. It took time, but now I have it. I've had it for seven years, and it has never failed because it, it was custom made. <laughs> you have to know who you are. This is how ridiculous it is. My wife is a classical musician, highly trained classical musician, extremely gifted. She can read charts and r complicated rhythms. To me, they're just like dots on a page. I'm like, huh? <laughs> but she's doing her thing, every note she's reading, every note, no matter how slow or how fast the, 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 the musical piece may be, she's reading line for line, note by note. I can't do that. I'm a jazz funk head. I know how to make you move. I know how to make you cry. I know how to make you get up out of your seat and run, using that thing right there. I know how to create music from my soul. I know how to write music from my soul. I'm not classically trained. My wife doesn't know how to create music from her soul. She is classically trained to read charts. So how ridiculous would it be for me and her to have fights about who is the greatest musician? We're both gifted in different areas. Why would I say to Michelle, I'm a better musician than you, or she says she's a better musician than me? We are different 
and we have a special calling in different areas. So rather than fighting, we come together and create something beautiful. We use our uniqueness and come together and create a masterpiece. So why are you allowing anybody to drag up your past? Why are you allowing anybody to talk about you? People that know your history. Why are you allowing people to talk about who you were and what you did? Do you not realize you're not that person anymore? Sure, you may have been on suicide watch. Sure, you may have been addicted to substance abuse. Sure, you may have been dealing with sexual abuse. You may have been in the club last night. You may have been in your bed of a fornication just last night and coming to church saying, oh, thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. You can fool me, but you can't fool God. And I'm not here to judge anybody. Please understand, Lee Ferguson is a sinner saved by grace. The only difference is I just am obedient to the call of God. So I'm not here to judge anybody, but I am telling you now, no matter where you've been or what you have done, there is a God strategy for your salvation. No matter what you have done or where you have been, there is a kingdom strategy for your salvation. Don't allow anybody to talk about who you may have been. My gifts are unique to me. I may not be the greatest bass player on the planet, but I am. I may not be the greatest speaker or pastor on the planet, but I am. I may not be the greatest husband on the planet or the greatest father on the planet, but I am. Why can I, how can I say that? Because the gifts that have been given to me are unique to Lee Ferguson. There is only one Lee Ferguson. So why am I trying to be somebody that I'm not? I don't need to copy anybody else. When God said, I'm going to make you in my image, he broke the mold. He didn't replicate or duplicate anything. Everything about you is unique. You are fearfully, wonderfully made and made in God's image. And all the power that has been divested in Jesus Christ, you now have access to So why am I wasting my time having pointless conversations with somebody who's trying to tell me who I am? You don't even know who I am. Where were you when my face was down in the mud? Where were you when I couldn't afford to pay my bills? Where were you when I had to make a choice between gas and food? Let me tell you now, there is no glory in poverty. I choose, I much prefer to be able to be debt free than having to calculate my money and stretch my money. There is no glory. God has not been glorified in your poverty. I just said to you, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ask or think. So why are you worried about your mortgage? Why are you worried about your car note? Why are you worried about the light bill? When God has called you to take over the world. to Mark 11. Let's just see how crazy that sounds. Oh God, I can't afford to pay the light bill, Jesus. The electricity bill is so high. When God has said, I have created you in my image. I have created a home for you where the streets are made of gold. My feet are going to be walking on gold. Why am I worried about where my next meal is going to come from? The Bible says, take no thought for tomorrow. If God is able to feed the ravens and the birds and the, 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 take care of the, the, the flowers, how much more are you, his child? There is no good thing in Lee Ferguson, but I can promise you, if my son Lucas comes to me crying for food, I will do whatever I've got to do to make sure his mouth is full and his belly is full. And I'm a wicked man. How much more God? Do you not think God can see your tears? Do you not think God has heard your prayer? I just told you you're custom made and it takes time. 
You want instant. We live in a society where everything is instant, instant gratification. I've got to have it now. There is nothing in the Bible that says you have to have it now. There is seed, time, and harvest. If you can understand that principle, you're going to be cool. There is time. There is seed. What seeds have you been planting? The reason why I have financial abundance is because I've been planting my... Oh, I have been planting seed for years. Children that I will never meet, I am paying for them. I'm not saying this, I'm just, I'm telling you my testimony. I'm helping you to get out of your mess. What seeds are you planting now? What are you believing for? Plant the seed. Let that seed grow over time and then you will receive your harvest. Mark 11, verse 12. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar of having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the tree of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto, unto it, No man eat fruit of thee that hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Verse 20. And Jesus answered saith unto him, Have faith in God. Mm -hmm. Let me just stop there for a second. So, Jesus was hungry. He had a need. And he went to a supply expecting for this tree to produce its harvest. The fig tree was supposed to produce fruit to feed Jesus. That's its purpose. Jesus comes to the tree and notices that the tree wasn't producing fruit. Oh, God. So what does Jesus do? He curses the tree and walks away. I say that again. He speaks to that tree and he walks away. The disciples, the Bible said the disciples heard it. It's like, Jesus, we heard you curse that tree. The following day, they come back to the tree, and the tree has been withered from the root. Not from the top. From the root up. What am I saying to you? Too many of you are trying to resurrect dead things. You keep going back to that dead situation. You keep going back to that dead relationship. You keep going back to that dead business. You keep going back to that deadbeat boyfriend. You keep going back to that hussy, excuse me, girlfriend. Yeah, I said it. She's no good for you, but you keep going back to her. You are anointed. You are called. You have no business messing around with Jezebel. Yeah, hey, yeah, babe, what, 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 what you doing tomorrow? Let me just pop over there real quick and see what's going on. Yeah, I've got, I got service in the morning, but, you know, we've got five minutes. Let me just come over real quick. You have no business messing with Jezebel. That was for somebody. You have no business charging your credit card, paying for things, digging yourself in a deeper financial hole. Instead of speaking to it, you keep talking about the situation. You keep highlighting the problem. And you're wondering why it's not producing any fruit. Well, Jesus looked at the, 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 the situation and cursed it from its root. There are some things in your life you need to speak to and curse it. Stop talking about it. Stop highlighting it. Curse it and walk away. Curse it and walk away. Goliath has no business in your house. Curse it and walk away. That sickness in your body, curse it and walk away. That issue in your bank account, curse it and walk away. Now, when I say curse, I'm not talking about expedience now. <laughs> I'm talking about what the Word of God says about that situation. Jesus says, from henceforth, you will never produce any more fruit. And it dried up. From henceforth, the devil has no business in your family. From henceforth, the devil has no business in your home. 
from henceforth the devil has no business in your mind. Curse it and walk away. As I close, now, I keep saying this. I'm not a violent person, but I enjoy violence. There is a distinction. Don't judge me. <laughs> there is a distinction. One of my guilty pleasures is I love Uf UFC. When it's fight night, my wife knows to leave me alone. I'm going to be in my, in my man cave watching UFC for several hours. I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> Don't judge me because I come to your house and I find many guilty pleasures. I'm just telling you what I do. There is nothing more spectacular to me watching two men fight and seeing one guy over, overthrow his opponent, destroying a man's will. <laughs> I'm going somewhere. When two men are in combat, one guy will put another man in a chokehold. And he will hold this man in his chokehold until his opponent taps out. Mm -hmm. Another fighter now, They'll be engaged in combat. And this guy will do a haymaker or a jab in the head or whatever. And the, the opponent will be knocked out cold. Just <laughs> see you in the morning. What am I saying? Some of you, many of you, need to put the devil in a chokehold. Many of you, Need to put the devil in a chokehold. Why are you playing with the devil? Why are you playing with the devil? Uh -huh. You don't realize the devil is like a roaring lion. He's not the lion, but he's like a roaring lion. He's just looking for an opportunity to get into your life. You don't need to play games with him. He's a terrorist. He's a serpent. He has no business in your life. You're being too nice with him. Use the word of God and put the devil in a chokehold. <laughs> You will let go of my finances. You will let go of my health. You will let go of my children. You will let go of my husband. You will let go of my wife because I am fearfully and I'm wonderfully made and I'm made in God's image and I'm made in God's likeness. And when God speaks, it has to happen. So when I speak, it has to happen. When I speak, when I speak, it has to happen. I am the king in my house. I am anointed by the Holy One of Israel. God says, Lee, whatever you say, whatever you say, whatever you say, I will back you up. Do you believe? Are you crazy enough to believe that I'll back you up? That's the question. Are you crazy enough to believe that God will back you up? I said, are you crazy enough to believe that God will back you up? No. Are you crazy enough to believe that God will back you up? Whatever you say has to happen. As I close, tomorrow, maybe just this is making me nervous. I told you this is custom made, man. <laughs> this is not cheap. Tomorrow, I fly to the UK to bury my grandmother. No? No? Yeah, my emotions are, are sad. Of course. There is, no, there is no life memory that I have that doesn't include my grandmother. You understand? My whole life, I don't know life without my grandmother. So to think that my grandmother is no longer here, I don't even know what that means. Just yesterday, I'm on my phone going through messages that my grandmother sent to me. Be strong in the Lord, Lee, in the power of his might. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but she's no longer here. I received a phone call. And this is going to bless somebody. I received a phone call from my family say, uh, Lee, uh, grandma is, uh, she's passing. I'm like, okay. My brother calls me. And he's like, Lee, before she took her final breath, her eyes are closed. Before she took her final breath, she opened up her eyes, but she wasn't looking at anybody. Listen to this. He said to me that she's looking around and she's smiling. 
but she's not looking at anybody. <laughs> I'm like, what did she see? What did she see? She saw Jesus. She saw Jesus and she closed her eyes and went to be home with Jesus. So what am I saying to you? Even in death, you, even in death, you can smile. Because when you are in Jesus, you cannot lose. When you are in Jesus, there is no lack. There is no loss. There is no distinct. Oh. When Jesus is with you, there is nothing that can come against you. Even in death, my grandmother was smiling. She by any, by, she's not a person by any, by any levels that I would call her financially successful or famous. But she is a powerhouse for Jesus because you know why? In her final days, she's telling people about Jesus. She's testifying about the goodness of Jesus as she's laying in her deathbed. She's talking about Jesus. Her eyes were closed and as she opens up her eyes, she's looking at the glory that she's about to walk into. She sees the kingdom of God that she's about to walk into. <laughs> she's not sad. She's not, she, she's, she's one. She's home. Hear me, she's home. Hear me, she's home. I said she's home. You have won. If you can stay with Jesus, I don't care what the devil is trying to do in your life. I don't care about the oppression. I don't care about the sickness. I don't care about the lack. I don't care about the depression. If you can stick with Jesus, you shall win. If you can stay connected to the true vine, no matter what has happened in your life, no matter where you have been, no matter what you have done, no matter what, if you stay with Jesus, there is no lack, there is no poverty, there is no sickness, there is no brokenness. You will win. Jesus has never lost a battle. Jesus cannot lose a battle. When I say to you, you are made in his image. You are custom made. You cannot, 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 cannot lose. <laughs> so, what, so what is ailing you right now? What has come against you right now? I don't know what you're dealing with. It's not my business to know. But I've spent the last 15 minutes telling you about the one who is able to deliver you. Lee Ferguson in himself has no power. I have nothing to offer you. The only thing I have to offer you is what Jesus has said. All I am is just a messenger. I am being obedient to what God has said. My sister, right here, you come. Yeah, God just highlighted. I don't know you. Raise your hands. God just, I'm, I haven't finished my message. God said, you. God showed me you. In the name of Jesus, receive the power of God. That's amazing. That is amazing. Wow. Wow, okay, I'm, I'm done. Amen. I don't need to labor the point. You have a choice to make. You either believe the word of God or not. Please understand, it's 2024. This is not the time to be playing any type of games. I'm not here to give you a message of fear, but I'm here to give you a reality check. You either believe the word of God or you don't. We are in the year of acceleration and demonstration. I just testify to you that you're seeing a man that has experienced the acceleration and demonstration in his life. Turnaround happened just like that. Wow.
Heli bo shendi bihili bo shendi bahadi bo she. Mandi bihili bo shendi baha. Quickly, those of you who need an acceleration in your life right now. I was not going to call no laying of hands or anything, but God has just stopped me. If you need an acceleration, and I'm telling you, you, you need an immediate, immediate acceleration. Whatever it is, sickness, financial, relationship, whatever it is, quickly, quickly, quickly. It's here. It's here. The acceleration demonstration is going to happen in your life. It's going to happen. In your, come quickly. Don't second guess it. You believe the word of God as you're walking. Come with that issue. Quickly, quickly, quickly. My God, my God, my God. Hey, my God. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, that was an awesome service. God truly knows what we need and when we need it. And I want to say congratulations to everyone that accepted Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. This is the best decision of your life. And right now on the screen, there's some important information that we ask you to follow. Fill it out in its entirety and we'll send you a gift that will help you with the next step. Thanks everybody for joining us. And don't forget all the events that's going on this week. And we'll see you at the next service.